Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 Playoffs here. It's a Swiss format round to you, brought to you in part by our friends at Twitch TV, New Age, and MSI. We're into Game 3 of South Collegiate Institute versus Mansfield High School. And it's a one-to-one -one in the score right now, so this should be a very entertaining game. I'm Brian Kostetik and Trong, joined by Dominic K Caster Sato Romer. <laughs> I'm going to be a cast for today. Of course, after this best of three, we have one more best of three coming up, so stay tuned for that as more high school Star League action will be coming your way. Some very exciting stuff. Again, this is going to be the ace match between South Collegiate and Mansfield. Now, Mansfield, they gave up number one to some very impressive play from South Collegiate, who just retaliated fight after fight, taking objective after objective, pressuring Dragons, pressuring Barons, and eventually pressuring the Nexus enough to win. Now, Mansfield, they were behind again in game number two, up until about 17 or 18 minutes, but the very early aggressive pressure from South Collegiate did not pan out, and Mansfield were able to turn it around into a 27-minute victory, allowing them to bring it to this, the ace match. Who is going to be favored in this match? Who do you think? Uh, Crusader Kitten is going to be taking the win for this game. And I I really actually don't know how to answer that because this, these two teams have been pretty even the last match. South Collegiate Institute came back. Oh, no, wait. No, Mansfield High School came back after a really good early start. So South Collegiate Institute got a little bit ahead of themselves. And uh, we'll have to see how this plays out. I really honestly do not know if he's going to be able to pick up this win. Yeah, because, it's been uh, some it's fantastic like, trading teams, between yeah. these teams. They just, they're so willing to trade objectives to the left and right. They're not afraid of retaliating and making some crazy shoves and going for crazy plays. And it's been working out so very fantastically for both of them. Mansfield finally able to turn it around in game number two. South Collegiate um, being put a little bit on the back foot. Now, I know momentum is very important going into these games. Who's going to have the momentum in this one? Yeah, well, for momentum, that's definitely going to be Mansfield High School coming back after such a, uh, really just what looked like to be a loss for their team. Coming back after that really strong has got to be in their favor because, you know, South Collegiate Institute, they saw, you know, how well they started the game and then ended up falling. So definitely can't be feeling too good about that. But looking over at champion pickups this time, we're seeing a few repeat champions coming in. And uh, we're seeing quite a few new champions as well. We're seeing the Vayne coming out once again. Also seeing Graves. So we haven't seen Graves in this best of three. And uh, definitely going to be interesting how to see Graves. We're actually seeing, I think, Kastin's a repeat as well, right? Uh, yeah, seeing Snipeinator on that Kastin. He, I think it was actually someone else, but a gank in the top lane. We're seeing a Marcusel getting low. Throws down the pillar. He's able to get away using that. Also, of course, the Flash, but... And America on top, as well as Dark Black, had to use their own flashes, so... We're gonna be training that one out. Top lane, we're so seeing... It was actually Noobish Boy on Cassidy earlier, and now Snipernator yeah. is taking that away from him. Yeah, well, we be champion, but definitely we uh, different plays this time. We're seeing an America on top, seeing if he's coming to middle lane. The answer is no to that question. Looks like he will have to back out, however, Whistle is around. We saw Whistle on Zin Zhao in the first game, I believe, so... Seeing him playing that once again. I mean, these teams are pretty much kind of like mixes between the last games that we've seen. Quite a few weepy champions coming out, but of course, we're seeing Graves. I think that's the only new champion, actually. Hey, I yeah, think Graves it is was, the. Uh, yeah. Regardless, it's about four minutes in. No crazy action so far in both of the earlier games. We've already had first blood, so. These guys know what's at stake this time around. They're taking their time, playing patiently. Vapor going to be back on Thresh. Glefnir back on Leona. Some very confident pickups. And yeah. Again, there's just nothing happening outside of standard landing. No crazy rotations. These guys want to take their time, play it nice and passively, and a flay denies the engage in bottom. And Nubish Boy actually middle lane taking damage. Snipernator getting in there. Charm coming up, takes him into the tower. He flashes back in the tower shots. Nubish Boy gets the kill. Does not go down. Meanwhile, bottom lane Chaco Pocket gets low. But the heal coming out to try and save and Captain Jack low as well. Vapor gets caught up in a lot of CC flashes away. And America on top gets the kill. Glutnir going down. Flashing. Captain Jack gets the kill. Now looking for more. Possibly looking to get away actually. And America on top wants to get onto him here. Vault Break is away, we'll be getting out. Jocko Pocky still sticking around, Captain Jack as well. 
Yeah, that's an interesting trade coming out from Captain Jack and Vapor. They knew it was a 3v2, but seeing that they were able to bring Chaco Pocky low, they decided to re-engage. Unfortunately, that was a one-for-one -one trade. Both Glefnir and uh, SLG Vapor ended up going down. First Blood, however, going over to... Um, that's going to be South Collegiate, as they do currently lead a quick 100 gold. Um, though there will be closely followed by Mansfield, only 100 behind. Now Marcus Hill being engaged upon by Dark Black. Yeah, missing Marcus Hill. Going to get forced out of here, possibly. Dark Black is also low as well. This, these two top laners have been pretty aggressive in the past three games, but Marcus Hill has the CS lead right now. Of course, he's against that bully Renekton. And we'll see how that pans out for the lane. Middle lane though, aggression coming in Mansfield High School, picking up the first blood act way due to first blood. With the uh, Stipend trying to dive under the tire for that one, and there was just a really good play nice. coming out from him to pull him in there, so. So finding that lane up pretty much even CS. Really solid play coming out from just about everybody so far. Yeah. No, there haven't really been any crazy weak links on just about any of these teams. It's solid, solid play all around. The only thing that I'd say to watch out for is the communication between SLG Vapor and Captain Jack. When they work together, when they get solid communication, they can make plays. But when they're just a little bit off key, then it ends up hurting them very, very painfully. We've seen time and time again. When Vapor goes in and Captain Jack isn't ready, Vapor gets annihilated. When Captain Jack goes in before Vapor is prepared, that means that Captain Jack takes too much damage and is forced to disengage. So watch for their communications in team fights later on to see how they play, but a gank in the top lane. Yeah, we're seeing Talbot coming in as well. Marcus Hill getting low here. Newish Boy with the kill. Sniperator gets in here, but is unable to do anything. And uh, teleport actually on cast and something to realize, but the kill does come up here. Noobish Boy is actually sticking around to see if they can get onto Sniperator. Dark Black Nigo possibly looking to bait something out. He does have Dominus, but they do decide to back away. Yeah, Dark Black played that really well with Noobish Boy. He was able to bait out Marcus Hill, and he saw the teleport come out from Cassidy, but knew that he had the damage with Noobish Boy on that Fiendish Codex in order to obliterate. Uh, Marcus Hill before Sniperator could make it to the lane and allows him to secure yet another kill. So far, Mansfield lead quick 600 gold over their opponents because of those early two kills. Now, Noobish Boy finds Whistle in his jungle. Yep, Whistle going to call a few of his allies to Noobish Boy. Now in trouble, but and America on top is here as well, forcing the flash away. Dark Passage could fill that as well. There is the charm back onto Whistle. Sniperator finds a kill into Noobish Boy. Now they want to look for an America on top. He's exhausted. He's going to get out of there with the dash. But he's still in pursuit here. Sniperator looking to get right back onto him. He's trying to bait this one out though. Chocolate Pocky coming in here. Glefner is on the side of little Captain Jack is actually over the wall right now. But they cannot find a kill or re-engagement or anything like that. So it looks like these two teams will be backing out. And that was a one for none trade over to the side of South Collegiate. Yeah, in South Collegiate, they're even in gold now. Taking that kill is helping them bring themselves back into the game. And that was just Noobish Boy getting overextended. Taking the early Fiendish Codex gives him more spells, gives him more ability power, but he just doesn't have mana regen action in the top, though. Yeah, a lot of action coming out. I feel like Knights dropped down Dark Black here. Looks like he will be able to live, though. Dominus helping him out with a bit of health right there. Will be able to live from that. And uh, once again, just really aggressive up in this top lane. And the reason that South Collegiate was able to take that advantage was they staggered out the uh, fight with Nubish Boy. SLG Vapor made it in time to toss out an excellent Dark Passage, shielding both Whistle and Sniperator, keeping them alive from the onslaught of N-America and Nubish Boy long enough to allow Captain Jack to rejoin the fight and turn it around. So some really, really competent play from South Collegiate. That's the sort of communication I'm talking about. Ooh, Dark Black. Flash yeah, and die. the auto attack. Marcus still finds come meanwhile bottom lane as well. Heals coming out. Solo for a good job. Vapor is getting low, but Captain Jack bursts them down. He flashes into the death sentence. Chocolate Pug, he does find the kill, but Captain Jack is going to double it up. Gets the two of them. And that's a three for one trade around the map right there. And that is the communication from South Collegiate. Being able to drop enough CC on the Glefnir, being able to balance out Chocopaki with summoner spells that allows... Uh, 
Captain Jack to take those two kills, giving him a quick 3-0 to the 1-1-1 one, one, and one of Choco Pocky. He's recalling now with about 1,700 gold in the bank. I don't know yeah. if that's quite enough for a Bloodthirster, but man, he is feeling so confident. He is fed and farmed at the moment. 3-0 on kills. He does have the Bloodthirster, and he is way ahead in CS right now, and it's the... Uh, Bully Graves coming out, he has a Thresh to support him with that, and we're seeing them, they just burst it down in that bottom lane, it's kind of what Graves is all about. He has a lot of AoE coming out, collateral damage and buckshot, and he has uh, also has gets a surprisingly amount of tanky stats coming out from him as well with his passive, so able to survive through a lot of the damage here, and he'll definitely need to find a response for that Graves, because he is looking to get really strong in this early game. And it will seem like that would be Nubish Boy's main target. Nubish Boy, he's going to be the assassin on our reaction though on the bottom. We have Flay's coming down once again, Choco Rocky, and actually here's Marcus Hill at the top lane trying to do a Dark Black, gets the kill, and it was here's the more action down in bottom lane, Vapor gonna get taken down by Glefnir, Captain Jack gets caught up with the stun, he's trying to turn this one around, the throws out in an auto attack, does create the kill, taking one with him, back at the top lane, the fight is still happening, Sniperator comes in to see if he can help out, but it's too late and Whistle goes down. And Mansfield take a thousand gold over South Collegiate. That is some confident, confident play from both of these teams. Choco Pocky getting caught out with Glefnir under the power of Captain Jack's early Bloodthirster and the CC of SLG, but the quick counter gank from N America allowed them to turn that around and do a quick double kill for only Glefnir. In addition to being able to take that turret, they also took a few kills in that top lane by shutting down uh, I believe it was Whistle and Marcus Hill. So some very, very impressive play bringing Mansfield back into the lead for this game. They're about 1,700 gold ahead right now. And here's Marcus Hill looking for Nubish. Yep. Trying does get thrown on to get some slow down. So Nubish boy going to be safe with that. And he has definitely had a lot more of, effect, of an effect on this game than Sniperator has. And that's definitely great for him because they're both pretty much the Romy assassin. Uh, middle laners and Nubish Boy has had a little bit more success with that kind of roam. And Kasten, you know, surprising. Kasten, really strong pick nowadays, but we're seeing Ari just coming out a little bit strong in this match where Marcus Hill is in trouble up top, and his Dark Black is in here once again. And this time Marcus Hill is outnumbered and taken down. Nubish Boy with the kill. And that's yet another collapse onto Marcus Hill. So oh, much yeah. emphasis from Mansfield have been has been to put Marcus Hill down, deny him from getting anywhere. And the fact that Marcus Hill is building damage with that Bilgewater Cutlass into Blade of the Rune King means he's not going to be very effective in team fights until he completes a defensive item after that Blade of the Rune King. And with Choco Pocky on Vayne and a Deathfire Grasp on Noobish Boy's Ari, that's going to be a really rough mid-game for Marcus Hill to overcome. Yep, so with this tower score so far, 2 to 0 in the lead for the side of Mansfield High School. And they are also up in kills. And actually, some action in the middle lane here. We're seeing a little bit of push, but bottom lane as well. Once again, they're just so aggressive down here. Box gets thrown down here. Captain Jack looking to cut away. He's exhausted, seeing for Chaco Pocky. They do throw down the solar flare. They're focusing onto Vapor. Captain Jack throws out some burst, but unable to pick up a kill. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, tower will be going down. It's picked up by the side of Mansfield High School. Actually, Captain Jack still sticking around bottom lane. Finds it comes to Glutman looking for a 2v1 here. Hitting out the Choco Pocky. Can he pick up the kill here? Heal coming out to get the bait. He does find a double kill. However, he's in a bit of trouble. There's three members coming down from Mansfield High School. He's pretty much dead in the water right now. Yeah, Captain Jack going to go down here. Dark Black finally getting that kill, bringing it to 11 to 8 in favor of South Collegiate. That was Captain Jack and Vapor trading rather well using their effective mobility in that bottom lane to bring uh, Glefnir down despite the fact that SLG decided to die as well. Now Choco Pocky, he just overstayed his welcome to Captain Jack. He was at lower health. He doesn't have the regeneration as he did only have that uh, Bilgewater Cutlass when that engage happened. And it will be traded for a quick tier one outer turret for South Collegiate. But Mansfield, they are dictating the pace of this game very hard right now. 3,000 gold ahead. Looks like they're going to be headed for the Dragon. Yep, so we're going to be seeing this dragon going down here pretty soon. Pretty much everyone on the map is going to be able to get here in time. They, everyone knows that this dragon is happening as well. Whistle fairly low though, so it's going to be a little bit dangerous for him when he wants to go in. Marcus Hill though, trying to run some interference. This dragon will be started though by the set of Mansfield High School. But here is the engage coming up. Chaka gets caught up. Everyone's going to be diving in though to try and get onto the back line. Marcus Hill though gets 
Melted trying to get down. The shutdown though does go down onto Dark Black here. But Chaco Pocky flashing in. He's looking for kills. So many members are low. He is looking for it. Gets the first kill. Now gonna be moving on. Trying to get onto Zinzel. Now onto Captain Jack. Gets a double kill. And so many members are still low. He throws in the heal for some extra movement speed. But the. <laughs> The Condemn pushes him away. Newish Boy take, gets taken down by the tower. And Chaco Blackie, not able to stack up on the kills, does get two, though. And that was the incredible team fight from Mansfield. What we saw was uh, Marcus Hill, again, he does what he did in every other game. Uh, he ran into the back lines to try to shut down the carries, but the fact that he was 0-3 going yeah. into those back lines meant that he got obliterated absolutely quickly. Chaco Pocky and America and... Um, uh, not Slypenator, um, Nubish Boy were able to burn through Marcus Hill's health bar so very quickly despite the subjugate that he went down and from there on out it was just a South Collegiate running for their lives but you can't run away from a vein with a Blade of the Rune King and um, that final hour so really really solid play from Mansfield in order to take an advantage they're going to be able to secure the dragon after that extended engage and yes they lost two members of their team they were able to take up three and the dragon yeah, and you're talking about how um, Marcus Hill, obviously his job is to dive into the back line, try to run dis some disruption. Didn't work out because he uh, doesn't have the best score. I got shut down in the lane. Dark Black, though, after quite a few roaming uh, roam kills coming up to the top lane by Nubish Boy, Dark Black did a much better job at tanking up in that back line, and he took down so many members of South Collegiate down low. Pretty much easy pickings. For Chaco Paki when he got into that back line, so able to pick up those kills there. It's 14 to 9 and a nice 5,000 goal lead for the set at Mansfield High School. A South Collegiate, they're doing what they can to try to turn it around. We see quick rotation in the bottom lane, almost catching out uh, Captain Jack and Snipenator, but here's another gank onto Marcus Hill. Yeah, Marcus Hill once again gonna get taken down here. As you saw them, battery does come through, and America gets the kill, but teleport coming in, whistle. And Snipernator are here to try to help out here, looking for some damage. Whistle though gets taken down so low, he's gonna go down. Dark Black with the kill takes a tower shot, flashed in from Man America, trying to get at the Snipernator, but he can't quite get the last hit. Snipernator will live, but he will be trying to stick around here. The tower is gonna go down. I don't think Snipernator can really do anything about this push. Yeah, that was a huge play coming out from Mansfield. Again, they're dictating the pace of the game, looking for a dive in the bottom lane. Yep, just uh, gonna get uh, a little bit disengaged going out there. Newbish boy, unable to get in. The top lane tower does go down. There is a DFG coming out looking for some burst onto Vapor. He wanted, he wanted to make him his name. Just a bunch of Vapor, but unable to get the kill. Captain Jack forced to get, take a dark passage out of there. And bottom lane push coming That's in strong, Mansfield. but towers with four to one. Yeah, Mansfield is just dictating the pace of the game. They're up 7,000 gold. They're pressuring objectives. They're forcing fights with South Collegiate. And we can see time and time again, they're continuing to increase their advantage. It's 18 and a half minutes in. They're up seven kills. They're up three turrets, and they're up one dragon. That's a lot of global gold. And the fact that they're able to get these major item pickups, the Spirit of the Elder Lizard Randuins on Vi, the Randuins Ravenous on Renekton, they're getting so much further ahead in stats that soon South Collegiate won't be able to keep up. South Collegiate has got to start making some counterplays of their own if they want to try to contest this incredible pressure from Mansfield. And Mansfield definitely looking strong in this game now. They're going to be going back, picking up quite a few items, even with South Collegiate into their ADK Captain Jack is 7 and 3 right now, but they just don't have the support for him. He's the only one on the kill, or his he has a majority of the kills on his team and no one else on the team has been doing quite well they're really just behind in items for the rest of it Marcus so once again Dark Black is looking for stuff onto him Marcus is able to back out of their force he's the ultimate and it's just uh, overall domination for South Collegi uh by Mansfield here is now going to be getting in onto middle lane everyone's a fight out Captain Jack and he bursts it down he'll coming out Choco Pocket gets the last hit a solar flare does land but it's some whistle though getting caught out. He'll be going down. Noobish Boy with the kill. Snipenator going down as well. It's a double kill for Choco Pocky. Gets death sentence under the tower, but there's no one to help out Vapor. He'll be going down unless he's able to flash out. Choco Pocky gonna go low and gets shut down through the tower shots, and Vapor does make an escape. 
but that was such an incredible play from Mansfield. They got the pick onto Captain Jack. They got the pick onto Snipeinator because of Glefnir's excellent solar flare. Chakopaki getting a bit too far ahead of himself. He was going aggressive for the dive, did end up dying, which means that they might not be able to take the inhibitor because of this, but they've taken two turrets. They took two kills for one, three kills for one, and it looks like map control rests securely in Mansfield favor. They're up now 10,000 gold. That's nine and a half rounded up. And a lot of those major item pickups are going to be completed for Mansfield as they do back off to defend. This would be a good opportunity for South Kalija to try to pressure somewhere else on the map. But with all of their waves pushed, there's really nothing that they can do. So, me seeing some more clearing going around the map here. A lot of pressure coming around onto the Baron area now. Mansfield and South Galicia definitely looking towards that side of the area. 20 minutes in, both teams are definitely looking around. Top lane push is actually going to be coming out here. And meanwhile, middle lane push going to force the side of South Galicia to go back. They were trying to take down an outer tower, but they have to rush back to their base to defend their inhibitor right now, which is going to get pushed in by Mansfield High School. Yeah, that is just such a confident rotation from Mansfield. They see uh, South Collegiate make a beeline for that top lane, walking past the warded Baron pit. And they say, you know what? We don't even have to fight. We don't have to even defend the turret. We're so far ahead. We've got solid control. They're setting a death push up. Oh, there is a soul fight coming down. They're all jumping over sniping it. He gets sniped out himself there. And now they'll continue on in for this fight. Captain Jack gets taken down Choco Pocky, just melting him down in the back line. And they pick up three with that push. It will be the inhibitor falling in the middle lane. We'll see what else Mansfield can get out of that fight. And they're continuing to pressure forward, looking for the Nexus turrets. A huge play set up. Marcus Hill gets charm. caught. They get on to Marcus Hill and a whistle. Whistle gets low. Auto attacks coming in. He gets on the fountain. Marcus Hill can't get dead. And oh, he does get a kill on the Jocko Pocky and gets on the fountain to defend. But the Nexus Towers are going down low. One does go down. Snipeinator is back up. So is Vapor. So is Whistle. And they want to re-engage. They're out for Bud. Blood Flay going black. Dark Black is looking to get on himself here. But he'll be going down. Gets stacked up upon. And Snipeinator gets the kill. Yeah, a huge, huge play from Mansfield being able to pressure all the way to the inhibitor. Take a Nexus turret on top of that, though. Again, Choco Pocky overzealous. He got caught in the ignite, took too many turret shots, and ended up dying again. Now, Marcus Hill, he's looking for the Baron with the rest of his team, but I don't know that they have the ability con to contest this. Choco Pocky is back on the map, and America is waiting in the wings to try to go for a smite steal if that were to happen. And this is just a really precarious situation for South Collegiate. They're down 10,000 gold. They've lost their inhibitor, and they've only got a single Nexus turret left. They've got to defend and allow that inhibitor to get that uh, get back up. Look for yet another pick on to Mansfield before they can try to turn things around. So, we're going to see how Mansfield will continue on with this game. 6-2-6 six, and six on their AP carry. AD carry as well, getting some kills in for himself now. 8, 4, and 6. Finally eclipsing the KDA of Captain Jack. And we're seeing Vayne is just having such a strong impact into this game now. Same thing as well for Ari. And it was actually Captain Jack going to get uh, away from this one. And America was trying to go for an engage. And able to find it though. Yeah, Mansfield, they're continuing to pressure forward. They're not giving any rest or relief to South Collegiate. Dropping wards all around the Baron Pit has got to have South Collegiate feeling a little bit antsy right now. And as long as the Super Minions are continuing to pressure forward, they're going to continue feeling antsy. Now, Mansfield, they're going to be setting up yet another Death Bush, something that they are very famous for, as they've done it <laughs> three times in the past three games. So, looks like this could very well be the end. Oh, they're going to be catching on Marcus Hill, but he's not tanky this time. They'll burst him down here. Chaco Pocky with a kill. Soul Flare onto two. They catch on Sniper Nader. Destinance does come through, but they cannot get onto Sniper Nader. Now they might want to turn around for Vapor. They'll burst him down. Meanwhile, Noobish Boy and N America looking for kill kills. Glavner does find one for himself here. N America has to flash out because Noobish Boy is coming in to pick up the kill. Captain Jack trying to kite out. Dark Black finds the kill onto him. Now they get into Sniper Nader. He is trying to get away. Flash in the blade doesn't connect, but he'll still go down to the auto attacks. Or maybe not, as the dash does come out. He does get away the Rift Walk. But this will be the Nexus Towers going down. This is looking like the game. 
Yeah, the Nexus is certainly going to be the next target for Mansfield. We're going to take the comeback win. The Nexus itself now is naked. Jocko Paki, he's not even caring about any of the other champions. He's going for the Nexus like he should, exhaust, denying some of his damage with Dark Black and Glefnir, just continuing to bait it around. And finally, the Nexus falls. Mansfield are going to be taking game number three and win the series from South Collegiate. Yep, getting it two to one. So guys, we do have one more best of three coming up for the stream today, so don't go anywhere. The High School Star League League of Legends Season 1 playoffs will be right back. Thank you. 